All right, so let's get started with putting these things together. We're gonna to start with the green bean casserole. Now, we're assuming here that we all have salt, pepper, sugars, um, butter, milk, eggs, you know, the basic things on hand. Otherwise, you can also get that at the Dollar Tree. I didn't because I have plenty of it here. One thing that you may have already noticed when I was getting things out of the bag that I did not have was the cranberry sauce or stuff or whatever. And that is simply because they had there at the Dollar Tree, but it will not get eaten in this house. So I was not going to spend a dollar on cranberry sauce that we won't eat. All right, now this is all that I'm doing and I didn't spray this pan because you know what? Another great thing about this, it's gonna be very little dishes. <laughs> all right, so let's get this mixed up. Put in some of the, oh, they call these uh, crispy onions, but they're like the little French's onions. So we're going to put some in it. And I'm going to add some salt and pepper. I think I'll do a little more pepper. I started to just get one can of the green beans. That we usually like the taste of. Well, not everybody does, but I do. <laughs> Of the green bean casserole and this is just like a simple version of it this is just everything I'm doing I'm just showing you how things can be done for less you don't have to go and spend hundreds of dollars because this you know we all have times in life that we don't have it we may not have any money um, might do good to get a TV dinner which I think I just told my age a frozen dinner <laughs> I don't think they're called TV dinners anymore spread some of all this around and also, this menu can be prepared ahead of time. Like I could, I could even put this right here at this point in the freezer, and it comes with these little lids. So you can stack them in the refrigerator. Like I can get this ready, stack it in the refrigerator with the other things, and then pull it out the day of and heat it up because you're going to bake this on uh, 350 for about 30 minutes just to get everything warmed up all right so everybody associates thanksgiving with turkey and dressing or stuffing or however you want to call it so this is going to be a turkey and stuffing casserole so I'm not draining these two cans of turkey because I will need liquid. And this right here is like turkey broth. So I will have to use less chicken broth. 
<laughs> Makes it more nutritious. Here's a cream mushroom soup. Come running when they heard that can. I think it's tuna time. <laughs> Go ahead and put some salt and pepper in. And of course, season to your own taste. Any of these, like this right here, you could add. Other seasonings, you want to put onion powder or, you know, it's just whatever you have. I'm going with, oops, let's make a mess. I'm going with basics. Sometimes less is more. And sometimes it's the simple things in life. And if this is just a simple Thanksgiving meal. Well, here I am trying to get something open again. Hold on. All right. We had to cut into it. All you're gonna do at this point is just mix it and add the chicken broth. If you didn't want to buy the chicken broth, you could save a dollar and not get that. You could just use water. All right, so. After you get this mixed in, it'll go in the oven. It's all fully cooked, the turkey in it is. So all you're gonna do is just put it in there for like 30 minutes and 350. All right, I think I've got this moist enough. Guys, I apologize. I thought I was recording and I didn't. So right now we're making the au gratin potatoes and we're following the directions on the back of the box. So I've gotten to the point that I've already added the milk and the water and I used the chicken broth in place of, um, in place of the water. And now I've got to add in two tablespoons of melted butter. I really apologize for that. I thought I was recording and apparently I was not for whatever reason. So, and I'm gonna add pepper to this. All right, so then this bakes at 450, uncovered 25 minutes or until potatoes are tender and lightly brown. Let stand 10 minutes prior to serving. All right, so this is gonna be our sweet potatoes or candied yams. This is already in a syrup. We're just gonna dump it in like this. Spread it out a little. Pick out anything that don't look right to you. <laughs> And then 
caramel marshmallows. So this is going to take place of our dessert this year. You could put brown sugar, coconut flakes, all that kind of stuff in it. But remember, we're on a really tight budget. We're just trying to make Thanksgiving happen. So you just cover it up with marshmallows. And of course, save some for your hot cocoa. <laughs> or just a snack on. All right, all you're doing, gonna do on this is put it in the oven. You can put it in while you're cooking something else and just watch it. You just want to, the marshmallows to be melted, but not burnt. So that'll heat up everything and the potatoes and all as it's melting. All right, we're gonna do a what if moment on this cornbread. It says it's honey sweet cornbread mix. We need to add milk and three eggs. What if we don't have milk and what if we don't have any eggs? We're gonna see if we can still have cornbread with just water. We'll know when it comes out of the oven. So all I'm gonna do is just dump this into this pan right here. I'm not gonna start off with a bowl cause what if we don't have a lot of ways of washing our dishes right now? Maybe something's wrong with our dishwasher and we have to hand wash it <gasps> or you know we may not have running water in the house at the moment who knows we're just doing a what if moment on this cornbread we're going to see so we're just going to mix it in this pan we're not even measuring not even going to measure the liquid we're just Mixing it until it gets to the consistency the cornbread's supposed to be. So I'm gonna work on this and to save space in the video so I don't run over time, I'm gonna work on it off. All right, so I just kept adding a little water at a time until I got to the thickness and consistency that I wanted for cornbread. Now you could follow the directions and put everything in it like it says, but we're going to do this right here because we want to see. <laughs> um, also, you know, you might have the eggs and the milk. That may not be a problem. You might not need it for breakfast for your children or whatever else. Kitty cats. <laughs> but maybe you're just wanting to really get a hold of your budget. Maybe you're wanting to save up for a vacation or a house or to pay off debt or whatever. You know, a penny saved is a penny earned. So we're gonna try on this right here. This is what if cornbread. All right, so after stealing a little piece of cornbread off the edge to test it, we do have cornbread folks. So there you know. All right, so after spending $19 out of everything I used here from the Dollar Tree, 19 items, because these pans came in a set of three. I used both sets. I didn't use the square ones that you saw. And, you know, the gravy, I just, you, all you do is heat and eat. So I opened it up, put it in a dish. Uh, same with the corn. I did drain a little bit of the water off of it, and I added pepper. Uh, you know, butter would have been good, but we're trying to keep our costs down, and I put the extra butter in the mashed potatoes. I, I went heavy on the butter in the mashed potatoes, but you wouldn't have to. For the most part, I followed directions other than adding a little extra butter. And then also on these all gratin potatoes, followed the directions macaroni and cheese, follow the directions. So there you go. I'm not going to sample any of this because I have decided that I'm going to put the container lids on and I'm going to put it in the freezer and take it out the day before and put it in the refrigerator. And this is going to be Thanksgiving at the beach lady's house. 
I appreciate everybody watching. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.